back in the hangar, working late. <laughs> but I'm working on that retractable landing gear with the linear actuator for my Challenger 2. Hope you enjoy this update. It's a short one. Thanks for watching. Well, back here in the hangar again. Um, it's late. It's 11 o'clock at night. And uh, I got here at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I did some work on the uh, Emerald, just a little bit, not much. And then the rest of the time I've been spending on the Challenger on that landing gear. And yes, I did go with the linear actuator. And it arrived. It came in on Friday. And today is Saturday. At least it will be for another hour. Um, and I'm here. Um, it, it took a long time to figure out how to get this thing put together. A lot of uh, a lot of head scratching, but let me show you what I've done so far, and um, it's not finished. But I might as well show it to you anyways, because uh, gives you guys a bit of an update. So I'm going to switch this camera on. Oh, by the way, I'm using a cell phone right now because uh, I left the cameras back at home. <laughs> Oops. So um, yeah, hang on a sec. I'm going to see if this works. switch it oh hey this doesn't allow me to no it didn't allow me to switch it while I was recording oh, I don't know I thought you could do that with these but anyways um, so there's a cut <laughs> I will edit that part out that's what I made so far um, so let's let's explain what we're looking at here this is the linear action. Yeah, I'm not used to using the phone. It, um, it kicked off there. So let's start again. This is the linear actuator. And uh, this bracket piece over here, let's get a close-up look of it. Okay, it's not finished at all. And uh, this is the part that moves forward and back. Over here, there's just a, a cotter pin, but there will be a, uh, a spring pin that can be pulled out. And when that pulls out, the bracket will separate. And this is where the uh, cables for the main landing gear will tie in. The nose gear ties in on the screw over here. And if I pull that pin, it will release. And um, that's, that's going to be just in case this is extended. And... I can't um, uh, retract the linear actuator, which means lowering the landing gear. And that would be a very bad thing. Very, very bad, because now you gotta try to land without wheels. So there's gonna, going to be a cable tied to that, that spring loader pin and a red handle to yank on it. And that separates and gravity will drop it down. Because right now gravity is what drops these landing gears anyway. So. The reason I have these these adjustable uh, uh, nuts over here, these uh, uh, whatever whatever thingies, I'll think about it. I'll put it down here. Uh, what it's <laughs> that's because the cables that are going to be coming through here are going to uh, be adjustable for the main landing gear, so that when this is fully extended, if if I didn't make the cables exactly the right length, I can I can adjust it. The nose gear just goes in the uh, center piece over here. And that doesn't matter because um, uh, my nose gear, uh, as long as that nose is high enough so it doesn't hit the water, we're good. And seven inches will be more than enough. Um, the back piece over here, let's see if I get a better detail. This is just a uh, angle aluminum. And this back piece over here, Essentially what it is, is, oh, there it goes again. These, you know, I'm not used to using a cell phone. I, I've hit one of the volume buttons and I think it shut it off. Anyways, the three holes over here are going to be for the, um, uh, for the lines going in. The cables for the main landing gear are going to be coming in through these two holes here. And they're going to go to these eye holes. The nose gear cable comes from the front. 
So what's going to happen, I have to still make another little bracket just to hold the cable here. It's not going to be braced. And then the air, the, the inner cable will go free air through this pulley and through this hole, uh, this hole over here. And that'll be attached down lower. And the reason for the pulley is because, if you recall, when I was doing this originally, um, trying to yank on that um, nose gear, especially when you had a 90 degree curve with these cables, and that's, you know, like the bicycle cables, that kind of stuff, it doesn't like the friction. So that pulley is going to be much easier to uh, um, deal with. So the cable is going to, the outside sheath is going to stop somewhere around over here. Then the cable will be free air through the pulley and then back in again. And it's riveted here and that kind of stuff. It's, just, it's not fully assembled yet, so it's kind of loosey-goosey. Anyways, yeah, that's, that's what I've done so far. Um, sorry about the rotten camera work. Now, with this bracket here, what this is for, and there's one more that I have to make for the front, that, let's go take a look back here. The linear actuator, here is the uh, backside. Oh, this is a really narrow angle. All right, let's see if I can get a good angle on this. Okay, for those of you who know what a Challenger looks like inside, um, there's the um, uh, long Duron here, big heavy tube. This little tube down here, that's just to hold the uh, fabric, really, <laughs> is for form. That bracket is going to be riveted onto that tube and the same tube back here. As a matter of fact, there's the two holes for the one. And of course, match holes in the other. So that bracket is going to be coming along the back side here. I'll back this camera up a bit. It's going to be just about parallel to underneath this tube here. And the linear actuator is going to be on the left hand side forward of that. The front end of the linear actuator is going to end up being roughly at the front end of this aluminum plate. And uh, this aluminum plate I put in because. I uh, redid the uh, locks for um, uh, for the floats. I didn't like the cable being, you know, all the way outside. It was a trip hazard. I wanted to bring it from underneath. But if I'm going to cut holes in the fabric, the the the, the, the holes, the, the fabric would just tear. So this aluminum plate is glued to the fabric. Then I drill the holes. So that means that it's never going to rip the hole. Like you're, you're never going to lose your undercarriage, if that makes sense. So anyways, um, yeah, the linear actuator is going to be on the left side. And um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Let me flip this camera around. Hi. Um, again, apologize. Rotten camera work. Because I don't know how to use a cell phone for this. Like this is just not the same. So, yeah, when it's fully assembled, I will give you another tour. It'll probably be next weekend uh, when I get it uh, finished. Uh, I might come back tomorrow, tomorrow Sunday. I'm in the air at 11 o'clock in the morning um, uh, doing some more practice. I might just do touch and goes, that kind of stuff, because there's supposed to be pretty strong crosswind uh, this, uh, or winds this, uh, this weekend or tomorrow anyways, and um, um, if the winds are as predicti predicted, it's gonna be near the limit of crosswind capability of that uh, Viper Cherokee that I fly. And um, I just need to, I need to get some practice on that. And uh, um, so yeah, I'm gonna beat myself up tomorrow, flying in a crosswind, swearing the whole time, just thinking to myself, why am I doing this? Why not wait for a nice day to practice? Well, because you don't always fly in nice days. So I'm going to take advantage of the not so nice day and do some crosswind takeoffs and landings and, uh, and such uh, tomorrow. And uh, do a little practice on that. I get, again, getting ready for my check ride. So, uh, and after that, I, I might come back down here to the hangar and finish up. And if I do, I'll film that. 
uh, or at least I'll give you a narrative update of what I'm doing, or I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, but I'll bring my cameras, my real cameras. Um, they're cheap, but they work better than a cell phone. So that's it. Hopefully you guys uh, like this update. Um, Got to fire the cameraman. He doesn't know how to work the damn camera. And um, yeah, so take care. Glad you guys tuned in. Hopefully um, this uh, makes a lot of sense. One last look at that linear actuator. Hang on a second, let's swing this around. Oh yes, it's still recording, good. Hmm. All right, so one last look. That is what it looks like right now. So that moves forward and back. Cable's coming in from the back side and will be attached to those and then that'll lift the gear. Uh, the uh, locking and unlocking, of course, is going to be manual operation as well. There's one more thing I have to do uh, with, th with that. Um, after I get this linear actuator in and it functions, I still can't use it because what I need to do is I need to install some safeties. And one of the safeties I need to install is this lock here, which right now is unlocked. Um, there, now it's locked so you can land, the landing gear won't pop up. I need to uh, create a, a, a circuit that has the both main landing gears. Um, there's gonna be a micro switch on here, probably a reed switch because they're sealed and they'll, they'll be good on the water, that um, if the landing gear is in a locked position, the linear actuator cannot operate. It cuts, it'll cut power to the linear actuator. Both of these will have to be, come on, let's see, can I do that? Yes, both of these will have to be open, unlocked, then power will flow to the linear actuator to raise and lower the gear. So I've got to create a little circuit, a safety circuit for that, that uh, locks out the actuator if, they're, if the gear is in the locked position, either up or down. And I'm also thinking I might figure out a way of installing some uh, magnetic switches on here so that I can tell whether the gear is up or down. I'll work on that. But right now, right now, I got to get that in there, moving that stuff up and down. So... Once that works, then I got to work on the safety, uh, the safety circuit, so that it uh, it doesn't uh, so the linear actuator doesn't start pulling on these cables when, when they're locked. I'm not sure what would happen. They'd probably snap the cables because that has a 800 newton meter. Uh, it's about 179, 180 foot pounds uh, of of, uh, of torque. That's a lot of torque. It'll lift, uh, it'll easily lift 150 pounds. So you put 150 pounds stress on those cables and that's not a good thing. So yeah, a lockout is mandatory. Uh, so um, that's it. I'm closing this off. The time is 11.30 at night. It'll be Sunday morning in half an hour. <laughs> and I've got to go home. I got to edit this video and I got to upload it so that you guys can watch it on Sunday morning. So. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for following along. Um, I know hockey season for the most part is over for us Winnipeg Jets fans. That's all right. I'm still going to tell you to keep your stick on the ice. And we'll see you again here in the hangar. Bye for now. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate all the people who subscribed. I hit 604 subscribers as of today. Really impressed that people take uh, an interest in what I'm doing. See you again in the hangar. Bye for now.